Hey guys, I'm working on some fun rock quilting this morning on a collage quilt that I'm making. And um, I thought I would make this for my collage class, but I also use this quilting pattern or design in the Serenity kit too. So I thought I would not just save it for the class, but post it on YouTube for everybody. Um, it's a fun technique. I did not invent it. I don't know who did. I saw it somewhere and it's just super cool. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do it. It's really not too hard. I'm going to start out on a sample and then I'll switch to doing some more on my actual quilt, but you can see it better on the sample. So I'm going to move this out of the way. So um, you could draw your rocks to start with, but I don't even do that because I want it to be kind of sketchy. Um, so I just start by outlining some rocks and I make them pretty big. You want to try to vary the size and the shape, but you don't even really have to uh, finish the shape. Some of these have pointy points on them, and for now that's okay. I'm just kind of laying out my design. reason I'm making them extra big is because they're going to get a little bit smaller when we add the stitching in between. And once I've kind of filled in my area, um, you can see there's still several with little pointy things on them. So now what I'm going to do is just keep going around the shapes and this time I am going to round them off if they need it. And I'm just being pretty sketchy, I'm not being super super exact. This one has a point to round off there. And you could just go around and do this on all of them, or you can stop while you're in the neighborhood and fill in the little triangles that form in between. you want the spaces in between them to be but as you can see the more you stitch the more the spaces get wider and the rocks get smaller so that's why I don't leave any space at all to start with side of the rock has more thickness and you want to just go back over one side that's okay. I just whacked across that rock a little bit but that's okay too. If you've watched any of my videos you'll hear me say that's okay a lot. There's always a way to fix stuff. <laughs> I want people to relax and enjoy their enjoy the process and not stress over it. And a lot of what I do can be very sketchy and scribbly anyway. Still cool. I end up going over each one probably at least four or five times, if not more. And this big one has a couple of points all around off. But as you're filling in the, oh, my tension's a little bit off. Um, as you're filling in, that makes the rocks kind of puff up a little bit too. This looks extra cool with uh, like wool batting. Because they 
have a little bit of extra puff. So flattening down the space around the rocks makes them stand up a little bit. Just keep stitching around your rocks until you have as much stitching as you want and you can always go back to earlier ones and add more it's harder to take it away so just add it gradually and your rocks will gradually get a little bit smaller and a little bit farther apart so it's okay. all right now i'm switching to the actual quilt that i'm working on and as you can see it's harder to see um, but that's actually good too it's harder to see while you're working on it but then you're mistakes or what you think is mistakes won't show very well either. So I'm just going to add some more stitching in here and just keep going around and drop several points that I want to round off. And I just ran out of bobbin thread. All right, hang on a sec. Also something that you probably would not want to do on a snuggly soft quilt you know that's going to get used this is more for an art quilt type quilt because it does make it pretty stiff all that stitching but as you can see it's even more forgiving on an actual quilt where it's just going to disappear into the background, but it still gives that texture and you can still see it. So I will go finish my quilting and I'll post a picture of this when it's all done.